So you want to build a solar array for your overland camper, and you must be like me because you're turning to YouTube in order to teach you how. My name is Phil, this is my project truck called Fort Kickass. It is an overland camper made out of a 4x4, 4 liter Ford Ranger, and today we are going to be mounting my solar panel array back onto my new truck bed topper since I just got an extra high one. So here's your shopping list that you're going to need to get. You need to start out with the panel, then you need the mounting brackets, the wires for it, and the charge controller. These items that I've listed so far can come in starter kits, which is what I just bought off Amazon. It was $170 Canadian. I got a 100 watt panel, as well as the mounting bracket, ASIC charge controller. At the time of filming this video, Renogy was the brand that had the um, best bang for the buck, really. And also I got the panel. The build quality is fantastic on it. I've been driving with highway speeds and there's no flexing, it's really solidly built. So I would go on Amazon and just order a Renogy 100 watt solar panel starter kit. The next thing you're gonna need is the inverter. The inverter is what actually takes the 12 volt power and turns it into 120 volt AC so that you can plug things like the fast charger for my iPad, uses wall power, not USB. So you can plug in things like that you can also just do direct 12 volt accessories, but I would still suggest an inverter just because they have the ability to cut off the battery if it gets too overdrawn, which can damage the battery. So it has low voltage cutoff, which is super handy. And then lastly, you're just gonna need wires, screws, uh, lock washers, washers, bolts. Part two, the planning phase. First up, planning phase. Chances are you're like me, you don't own a money printer, otherwise you'd just be hiring one of us peasants to do this for you. So you're doing the DIY approach to save a buck. I ended up saving about one third of the cost. So I was able to put that extra money into just getting a bigger array. The first step in planning is to determine your needs, what you actually will be powering with this solar setup. I have an iPad, an iPhone, and a heated blanket, and then a few other things like this studio light, which is just these tiny little batteries that are like five watts for the charger, as well as I have a mini LED projector, which is also five watts. So overall, even with the heated blanket and everything else plugged in, I will never draw more than 100 watts. And I generally don't use everything at the same time since these all have batteries and I can kind of swap it out. I generally only draw about hmm, maybe 30 or 40 watts at a time. I ended up going with a 100 watt panel. This is where I think most people should start out because the 100 watt panel, it's easy to expand them. They're a good size. They're a good value for money proposition. A few tips for planning. I would say if you're thinking you're going to be running an electric space heater, then this is not an approach. You're going to need a generator for that. They use so much electricity that you're just going to spend so much money on panels that you may as well just buy a diesel heater or a generator, <laughs> right? Um, if you want to do electric heat off of solar, do what I do and just have a electric blanket. They make them in both 12 volt and 120 volt. And mine, when it's on low, draws 45 watts, which is super small. My battery can power it all night long. And then my solar panel can charge up my battery by lunchtime on a sunny day. So I have some good overhead. Also, tip number two is if you're thinking of running your laptop, I would say skip the laptop and do a tablet instead because my tablet only takes 18 watts to charge, whereas a laptop would have been like at least 100 for like a low power one or some of the gaming ones draw a few hundred watts. So skip the laptop and use your phone or tablet and you will able and you'll be able to have a much smaller solar array and battery, which can save you a ton of money because powering an Alienware sort of laptop, you're going to have to spend probably like three grand in batteries to power that for a day. Part three, actually building it. See, first time I did this, I was really dumb and didn't realize how much of a pain fiberglass dust is. So the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna take all of your bedding, anything that you can't vacuum directly is going to need to come out. Second thing is put on gloves. 
that will keep the fibers out of your hands because it hurts. Trust me, it doesn't feel like it in the moment, but then like for the next few days later, you're going to be like constantly itching your hands. It's, it's terrible. And then lastly, on the inside to prevent mess, what you do is underneath where the hole is going to be coming out, you take garbage bags and duct tape and just duct tape around it um, so that it catches all the particles. So this is what I'm talking about by taping a bag to the ceiling when you start drilling because then it's going to catch all the, the fiberglass dust. All right, so I have finished bolting all the solar panels, uh, brackets, and I made sure to use silicone to make sure that it was waterproof. I have lock washers on there as well. I have washers on both sides of both the inside and the outside to spread out the weight. Since then, I have hooked up my inverter and charge controller. All right, so this is the order that you need to hook up your electronics. First thing, you take your battery, and you hook your battery up to your solar controller. If you plug in the solar panels before you plug in the battery to that unit, you will fry everything. Heads up. So, you take your battery negative, you put it into the battery negative on the charge controller, you take your battery positive, put it into battery positive on your charge controller. You can also plug in your inverter to your battery at this point because you're probably going to be bolting them down to the same terminals. And then once you have all that wired up, connected, then you plug in your solar panels and they just plug in using these fairly standardized connectors here. After that, you're pretty much done. You see, the most difficult part of doing solar is actually just mounting everything. Hooking it up is super easy. It's a good idea to also use inline fuses separating your battery from your uh, inverter and also your battery from your solar charge controller. All right, this wraps up our guide for how to install solar panels on your Overland camper rig. If you liked this guide, let me know down below. And also, if you have any questions about solar setups in general or even Overland camping, please let me know in the comments. I'm actually pretty active down there and will respond to you. If you're from the Facebook group, make sure you go down there and say hi too. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content from me, and until then, I will see you next time. Wait, 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 wait. hold up. Before I go, I just did one, one more mod. I thought I would show you. Googly eyes.